here on they're working up but the club head's still going down so that's kind of accelerating it yep and they're going up not because i'm pulling them up they're going up because i've turned them up and milo says that there's a hole here this this hole that we're on number four well it's number, number 13 right oh number 13 yeah right so number 13 is there's a ditch that goes from 250 out to 270 out so milo's got the the lumber out and you're gonna kind of carry it that's a good thing about being long because then now i not only do i lose 20 yards to milo i have to lose quite a bit more than that because i can't carry that ditch or i can't i can't chance carrying that ditch Oh, you hit it solid, Milo. That was a good one. That was a good one. All right, what line should I take with, with a 250 shot here? You want to hit it. See, there's a tall, like uh, one a cactus sticking up all by itself over there, out to the left pretty far. Oh, yeah, I see it. Uh -huh. That's your target. Okay. Oh, really? Okay, good. Glad I asked. That should be perfect. Okay, good. Yeah, guys, I just had these grips redone and somebody did not put like glue all the way in it and it slides right here and makes a noise every time I swing this club. I need to get that fixed. All right, 158 into the wind. You like a little left more than a little right? Yep. That's what it looks like. Okay. <clears throat> oh, well, there's a little right. Stay in the air. Get on the green. Yep, you're on. Okay, on the green. Yeah, we're gonna do a, a bunch of videos with Milo tomorrow for Be Better Golf, so definitely subscribe, guys. But Milo, something that we'll talk about is when I do feel that kind of motion like you're talking about, I feel like I always leave it behind myself. And I'm like, ah, where's the face? You know, especially if I'm used to this, you yes. know? So how do you, how do you get somebody to reconnect with where the golf club is in space, you know what I mean? Well, it's not a bad thing to have that golf club coming from behind. In any other game, the, the, the stick you're swinging comes from, you know, if I'm swinging a bat, the stick's back here, and I turn it into the ball. So it's, yeah. a, it's actually a good thing to have it there, as long as the face is, is good. So, if, right, so here's the matchup that's important, right? So if the, if the club's back here and the face is like this, you can turn right into it and you've got it square. If the club's back here and your wrists are this way, the face is wide open, so you need to figure out how to match. Okay, so show me, show me kind of in a slow mo way. Do the the athletic motion of the hips at, uh, blended with what the wrists have to do in transition, which is that. Okay, I see it. Do it again. Okay, cool. Makes sense. Yep. By the skin of his teeth, it was two seventy to carry the gulch. There's Milo's ball, and you can and it carried all the way there because the the. the, the uh, the landing spots right there you can see there's Milo's ball and he only carried it by 58 yards some 55 <laughs> yards something like, something like that so that was a good one Milo yeah it was good driver your favorite club to hit just the most fun for you it's the most fun yeah goes far but the one that I need to be the best with is this one is this your 58 or your 54 it's, it's a 60 okay I got 80 yards left Oh, it's on a it's on a string to it, Milo, and right over the top of it again. Right over it, <laughs> man. It, now, were you trying to land it past it and and I was and to make it, it come back? It spin it back. Yeah, it wanted to spin back. It just it was too up in the uh, the longer grass. Yeah, I wanted to land it on the green. I didn't want to land it in the long stuff. Milo's gonna chip that from there. You ready? To there. Oh yeah, I'm ready. You just do your thing today, and I'll I'll always call you off if I'm not. Okay. Wow, Milo, I didn't love it when you hit it, but it, it really got up there. I landed it where I wanted to. I hit yeah. it a little thick. Because you, you've been doing instruction. And you wanted to get on YouTube. What made you think of it? Uh, I just figured I needed to grow outside of this club. You know, yeah, I, right. I teach the majority of the members here at the club, but, yeah. and I teach quite a few young professionals, but Instagram brings me a lot of students as well. So. 
Oh man, you yeah. knew it. They stop so much faster than I'm used to. When I saw the speed that that was carrying normally, and these greens are so fast, that would have been off the green. Well, the way with the other green, with the other greens, I actually, when I hit that, I thought it was perfect. And when you said settle, I was like, what? Hey, good pie. Up. What, what's your key on that? What's your key for making those? I just try to get the speed right. If I get the line, I'm usually hoping that my first putt went past the hole so I know what it does. Yeah, okay. It's a little right. easier if I've seen it, but there you go. Putting lesson not too long ago. It's really helped me, but Who'd you that one. Take it from stuff. Tim Yelverton. Oh yeah, he's a good short game guy. Yeah, he's real good. He's done a bunch of stuff on Be Better Golf. Um, him and I together did this thing called the Be Better Golf putting system and the Be Better Golf short game scoring system, which is just me interviewing him about a bunch of different techniques and tips. Okay. Anyway, recently I just asked for just like a regular lesson and he just adjust, just changed my setup. Like I've always been left hand low, but like I had gotten it, the ball way too far forward in my stance uh -huh. and, um, and the club way too pressed forward as well. So okay. that, that was making the pull. All right, so what do we have here? Is so, this a par four? Par five. Good. Par five, five. I see that tree. Relative to that tree, the bushy one, where am I going? You want to go just right of that tree. Okay. And I'm going to hit it at the, there's a house out there with a red roof. Uh-huh. Oh, it goes to the right. It's a dog leg right. Okay, so if I hit that tree, I'm good. You're going to go for the I'm house. I'm going to go farther right. Because if yeah. I hit it at, toward that tree, I'll hit it through the fairway into the, the desert. So. You I underestimate my power. Great shot, Milo. Cut just a little more. In the fairway? Yeah, it's in the fairway. Just okay, good. Left side. That was so solid. Now, Milo, I was talking to Milo. Milo says he's hitting almost every shot, probably in the upper 90s percentage-wise of shots on the golf course. Solid, like flush solid. And that's, uh, that's crazy to think, Milo. Sounds fun. So like this, Milo? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I've learned that you got to be able to do. You got to be able to do the you mimic the wrong thing. You do. Okay. Oh no. Yeah, stay it's there. Pretty solid. But... If you hit it good, you might make it. Oh, I saw it bounce. It's gonna be right on the edge. All right, potential-wise, Milo, what ball speed are we looking for tomorrow? For we, you? Yeah, we, we like to see dramatic before and afters on Be Better Golf. What, what ball speed are we, <laughs> what are we looking for tomorrow? I don't know. Can we get back to the 170s? I think you can get to 170. There's a lot of uh, speed in using your hips properly? For sure. For sure? Okay. Oh, I like that. The speed's in sequencing things up so that the club is released by physics, not so by... So say that again. The speed is where? The speed is in sequencing things up so that the club is released by physics, not by you trying to accelerate it and push it. That doesn't... Uh -huh. It's not mechanically the fastest way to do it. So if, if, you're, if the levers are unloaded because of what you're doing, not your muscles, you'll go faster. Say that again. If the levers are unloaded... <laughs> if the levers are unloaded because of how you're moving and how you're pivoting and what the torques and things that are being put on the handle, not by your hands, but by your actual pivot, the thing will go faster. Oh, I gotcha. Through impact, how much pressure are you feeling on your right trigger finger? Quite a lot, but because it, but it's from your body? Yeah, I feel a lot, but I'm not... I'm not pushing it to keep it that way. I'm feeling so. It's not like a coupling thing that you're doing, but all of this together is pushing on it. Yes. Yeah. So it's create. There's a continuous acceleration of different pieces of me. So mm -hmm. that's accelerated. Then my arms begin to accelerate off of me, and because they're still accelerating, the club is mm -hmm. kicked back, and then the club's you, unloading. So through impact, do you you feel some pretty good pressure here, or so, is it gone by the time it's at impact? I'd say it's it's leaving as I'm going through impact. Okay, gotcha. When's it at the most? Probably about right there. Down in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the club begins to unload itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm just hoping it hasn't all the way unloaded. Mm -hmm. It hasn't 
caught up with me completely by the time I got to impact. And do you, you know, some guys talk about pulling the grip off, off the club. Do you pull up on it? From this point when there's a lot of pressure, do you then start to lift the hands up? Well, the hands are coming up because... Yeah, it's a plane, so everything left is also up. Yeah. So as you're going left, it's going So as up. my body yeah. is already beyond, beyond square, the handle's going up because of that. Gotcha. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, because we're on like the roof of a house, so everything left is also up. Yes. And everything right is also down. And if, so if because you're... the club head is trailing, it's getting to... It's getting to the part where it goes up later. So my hands are already start. My hands reach their lowest point about right here. Mm -hmm. From here on, they're working up, but the club head's still going down. So that's kind of accelerating it. Yep. And they're going up not because I'm pulling them up. They're going up because I've turned them up. You're going open, left, and up all at the same time, just yes. body. Exactly. Cool. All right, paint a picture for us, Milo. You, this is a par five. You have. 200 yards left? I have exactly 200 yards to the flag. Okay, cool. What club? Seven. Oh, I tugged it just a little bit. Sit. Ah, well, land on top and bounce in the bunker. Yeah, I saw it slow rolling down the hill. Yeah. 108 right here. So about 100 yards. I do. I use kind of, I kind of modify the clock system, but yeah, I have kind of stock yardages for each of those lengths of swings. And then if I get a yardage that's in between, then I know I'm somewhere in between. You said you were one of Should be good. Oh, needed to be three more yards. That's a hard shot. No rake. What don't you like about this shot? Well, I've got the ball below my feet. I've got a down slope on the other side of where I want to land it. So, essentially, I'm on a down slope hitting to a down slope. It's not the best place to be. Okay. <laughs> ah. Hard shot. Ah, we're not, we're not short gaming this one very good. Yeah, debating. Five or four. Good shot. Get up. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I I'm short to be in that yeah, it's short, but. Uh, it's going to catch the right edge of the green, I think. It caught the right edge of the green, but looks like it bounced off. Sit. Oh, man, these greens are slow. You stroked that one nice. So they say, I'm the opposite. The uh, putting, putting, swing, uh, putting stroke confuses you. It doesn't confuse me, it's the reeds and the speeds and... There's a lot of variables in putting. Golf swing, you just hit it through the air.